Yeah, I was I was lost in conversation. I completely forgot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your Liberty Radio. Uh, we are back on a Friday night for more open lines. We want to know what's on your mind tonight, and apparently, uh, you guys, uh, uh, you guys have some stuff you need to get off your chest. I mean, we have callers on the hook to start the show. First time that's happened in uh, in a while. What's up, gentlemen? I'll get your, uh, your name plates up here shortly. What's up, RBL? Hey, what's going on, man? Well, you were in first, Rob. Oh, maybe we should let the people know how it works first. That might help, right? So, uh, all right, here's how it works, folks. There is a link in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel, also the new Prisoners Chat channel on Telegram, that will bring you directly into the stream. That is how you call in. Turn your camera on. Don't We don't care. Uh, but please, turn your microphone on. Uh, otherwise, it's just awkward for everybody. And we will make fun of you eventually. That's, that's just how it works. Yeah, I'm ready <laughs> that's to make out fun of, of the way. somebody. Yeah, that's out of the <laughs> way. Uh, you got in first, Rob. What's on your mind tonight? Ah, I got all kinds of things on my mind, Drez. Like uh, the state of this bullshit fucking uh, debate they just did the other day. I was forced to watch it um, with the promise that uh, I was going to get drunk, drink a whole bottle of wine, and then shit talk the whole thing. Oh, yeah. And it was uh, it was interesting watching Communist Harris up there talking uh, – what everybody wanted to hear. She didn't have a single cackle. I mean, I didn't watch it all the way to the end, so she may have, you know, got all her cackles in at the end, but she restrained herself to just a shit eating grin the whole time. Pretty she sure did. she was being fed, you know, the questions beforehand or answers in her ear, but she didn't cackle once. You're kidding me. Not a single cackle. She's I'm, last smirking. I'm incredulous. <laughs> I know. Well, I can't believe that. I, I've had my own theory that uh, these professional politicians, we all know that they, every word that they say is curated for the most part by speechwriters. And there was a reason they were making her out to be a total idiot in all her speeches, repeating the same old communist line <laughs> over and over again. I see you changed your, uh, your X hand. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it'll change again. I had, there was something brilliant I thought of this afternoon. And uh, as of now, I can't remember what the fuck it was. Uh, so it'll probably stay that way for a little while. Yeah. So um, she, she like destroyed the old man. He, he was like the get off my lawn old man. Every, every time that he would try to speak up, the uh, moderators would, you know, jump in. And uh, it, it really was three against one. I mean, <laughs> but he, he's his clown show. I mean, I, I thought it would have gotten old by now and wouldn't be so appealing. But I was just driving by somebody's house in my town yesterday. They had like fucking five flags up. God, guns and Trump and Trump 20, Trump Vance 2024. And, oh, my God. You know, did they, every did they variation have a of. Did they have a Trump crow on the on the porch? Um, I didn't really take notice because there were you so many start, flags. You got to start looking for that, man. Like it's really? it's it's a definite uh, it's a definite landmark to look for the Trump crow on the porch. It's about six feet tall. You know, it's cardboard cut out. <laughs> Trump, he's like waving or doing the fucking double pistols or some shit. I don't know. I haven't <clears> seen one of them yet. Uh, but Yona apparently has seen them all over the fucking place. <clears throat> I mean, it's not real till I see proof. <laughs> no, I've Cheers. seen I've seen pictures of them. Yeah, I have not seen that. I remember seeing a couple shrines built to them um, along Route uh, seventy from Pennsylvania to Colorado, but <laughs> I've actually seen some Kamala signs pop up around you know my local town, which is. Uh, funny because there wasn't a single Biden sign anywhere. 
Well, Do you see Biden Biden wearing the Trump hat? You guys seen that? Yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed every second of that because it didn't last long. And I th- it, it seemed pretty clear he knew what he was doing. <clears throat> the main thing I noticed. I haven't him, heard anybody, I haven't heard anybody say that about him in at least ten years, Driz. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, RBO. No. Sorry. Uh, the the only thing that really stood out to me of, from the debate was he actually got shot in the ear. Unless he had a fucking, well, unless he had it fucking taped to the side of his head, his ears noticeably smaller. The one that got shot. So, really, I was I was waiting to see it, you know, because I wasn't sure a, if it was real or not. If he actually shot by <laughs> an airsoft pistol, I don't know. I, I don't one, care. One of his ears is, <laughs> is noticeably missing a chunk. Like you can't see the chunk is missing, but you can see the mass is missing, and it's been reconstructed in the same approximate shape, but it dips in and it's smaller. Hmm. So, actually, I think he actually got shot. The jury was out until I saw that, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Huh. I didn't really pay attention to that. I was uh, trying not to look at him. It's hard to look at. And then R2. Yeah, the older he gets, the harder he is to look at. <clears throat> That's true. Especially when I he's have, got a scowl on his face. Well, I have to avert like, my gaze when he does that that chimp mouth with the little circular like, hmm. chimp mouth thing he does. I have to look away. Well, the uh, the moderators made sure to like, you know, fact check him in the middle of his fucking speak and when Kamala like repeated the same old lies that have been like, you know, even debunked by the super liberal like Snopes and stuff. And uh, they were just uh, let her speak away. The old Charlottesville fine people thing that they always like to bring up. They were the like, blood so, bath. yeah, the bloodbath thing when he was talking about economic bloodbath. And uh, well, that, that was one, a reference specifically to the automobile industry. Not yeah. the entire economy, but again, it's we know how these people work. They're sophists. They they take things out of context and and just it, they lie. They just straight up lie. You know, it doesn't matter. It, it whatever it is, as long as it fits the the narrative, that's that's what makes it okay. But the funny thing but, was, I remember hearing because it was supposed to be this way in the first debate, and I think it actually was, but I don't remember because I didn't pay that close attention. But they were their mics were supposed to be cut when it wasn't their turn to talk. And all the clips that I've been forced to listen to from it, because, again, I I absorb none of this media willingly. Um, Like when he's speaking, she keeps interrupting him. So her mic wasn't being cut. That's CNN. So that means. Yeah, but that means they weren't even adhering to their own rules. So it was illegitimate from the jump. Well, I, I heard at least one time where his mic hadn't been cut and he you know, said so he didn't he didn't like interrupt her. He was just like making like a you know exasperated sound or something. Right. But uh, I was, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just lie after lie after lie. And it wasn't even that entertaining. Like she, she straight up had been read like all the populist talking points, and she fucking were hit. She's hitting them. I, I can't fault her for her performance, other than you know the basic lies. But uh, yeah, she was very convincing to the normie who's watching TV. Mm-hmm. Between the two of them, he was the same buffoon that all the same people already hate, and then. I, I don't know who the fuck's really undecided of the people who do actually vote, but it's seems yeah, like uh, if there were people, if there the were people be to be, drawn. if there were people to be swayed, um, she was a good enough sophist to uh, make him look like the clown that he is. So I'm sure yeah. that's not popular in the conservative media, but that's no, just, he definitely, he got heated and lost his composure, lost his cool. He wasn't well prepared, yeah. and and he's got to remember he's seventy eight fucking years old too, and like they were yeah, they were like making it like fifty five. <laughs> so, you know, whoever wins sixty five. I don't know. I don't know how old she is. Seventy. She's a um, baby boomer. She's she? old. She's old to not have a child. 
let's say. Okay, so she's at least forty. No, no, she's, no like, she's, a, she's almost, she's either 60 or. Yeah, she's like, right. she's, she's never going to have a child. Gotcha. She, she missed that. That's what I'm saying. Damn, if she's 60, she actually kind of looks good for 60. I'll give her that much. I'm sure yeah, Montel I mean, already told her that. <laughs> Willie Brown. Yeah. I saw, um, was it Gavin Newsom? Uh, was uh, given a press conference somewhere, I don't know, talking about something. I didn't turn on the sound. I didn't need to because that wasn't the point of the video. The point of the video was to show you that standing behind Gavin Newsom uh, was Fox News correspondent Sean Hannity because Newsom reached back uh, and gave Hannity some dap really quick before uh. Hannity walked off behind him. Wow. Yeah. Was that in exchange for uh, pushing the Iraq war? Or... Uh, who knows, man? He knows, who knows. Hannity knows the next man up when this whole shit show oh, plays yeah. out. Oh, yeah. I think everybody does. I don't I don't think it's a very well-kept secret. The American I mean, honestly, psycho. I would not. I, I'll go on the record right now and say the next Democratic presidential ticket is likely Newsom Whitmer. That's just put sending fucking chills down everybody's spine. Yeah, I know. Who knows? They may come up with some, you know, world war here and uh, for, you know, some state of emergency that uh, activates their FEMA zones and rounds up all the people uh, who are against the state because you know, everybody seems to be against the state these days. Well, According to them, here's here's the thing, right? So they're they're going hard with uh, the, this whole hate speech and and regulating speech and and that bullshit, right? In oh, yeah. order for any of it to be taken seriously, there has to be an enforcement mechanism. There has to be, like what you have in the United Kingdom, where they're going around <laughs> and rounding people up. For posts that they make on social media poking fun at other people. You have to do that. Otherwise, nobody's going to take it seriously. So again, if they're going to try to do that in the United States over this election, because again, we're in the home stretch now. We're in the real dirty tricks part of the campaigns. Like this is where they pull out all the stops. Like I mean, like it matters, right? But you got to keep the morons entertained. So, yeah, I still haven't figured it out yet. I haven't figured out whether they're using Trump for one more. Uh, you know, this is why we're going to associate every American populist value that he's propping up, like he's the great populist, mm -hmm. and uh, demonize them as. You know, anti-American, even though it's, you know, free speech and Second Amendment rights and the first, uh, you know, the Bill of Rights. I can't wait till they start trying to scratch out of the top ten. I mean, they've already pretty much killed the Tenth Amendment. States are just weak vessels of, uh, you know, d don't do what the federal government wants and we're going to cut off your federal highway funding and all the kickbacks that you politicians get off of this shit. Mm -hmm. so I mean they know how to play ball but it's been consolidating for my whole lifetime yeah yeah I yeah. can't think of a time when it wasn't that's what naturally wakes you up is that you, you notice these moves that they're small but there's so many of them and it's over and over and over oh now there's cameras everywhere oh okay yeah I don't think I've watched the news with any regularity since I was like in my twenties hmm. because it had already started to get kind of clownish and you just listen to, you know, other than like, unless you're watching the weather people who, you know, are lying to you. Um, the other people you were supposed to be able to trust. <laughs> well, they get fired if they do their job. Like those, those Fox reporters that were reporting contaminants in the milk, uh, the, it That's was right. antibiotics and pus or something and uh they were like oh 
this is bad. Look what we found. We went to the university lab or wherever the fuck they went. They reported on it, and then boom, they both got shit canned. So, and it, you can't report on adverse reactions to pharmaceutical products because they're number one advertiser. You can't report on the war because they're number two advertisers of the war. You know, so it's like we well, can report on Arby's has a new menu item or the new food truck in our town just opened up. You know, some shit like that. That's the reporting. Not 56 extra people died this year for no apparent reason suddenly. You know, nothing like that. Well, how I, I summed it up when I was younger was uh, you got death, murder, destruction. Um, and then you on got... What, what, if it bleeds, it leads. And then... Yeah, yeah. Then you got like the sports and then the weather and then the fucking puppies that are on the side of the street. Uh, at the end, with a feel-good story to make you come back and watch <laughs> the whole fucking cycle over again. Yeah, or like the the neighborhood that helped the elderly woman repair her house or something like that. Detroit neighborhood takes old tires and paints them rainbow-colored and <laughs> plants, plants fucking succulents in them. We're cleaning up. <laughs> Does, does anybody know if the city of Flint, Michigan ever got new fucking pipes and water Pretty quality? Sure no. It was like $63 million was the estimate at one point. And I think That's about it. all the time. They spent $3.4 billion on just paying social media influencers for their jab selfies and shit like that. Is that right? And celebrities. Yes. They paid the I... average. It was an average of $3,000 per influencer. And it went out all over the place. Anybody that had more than like a thousand followers probably got the offer. Like, hey, you want to blah blah blah? Want to play ball? That's why there were so many fake jab selfies because I was like, I already took it. I'm gonna fake one. I want that money. Stuff like that was going on probably. Not not that they were like smart yeah, enough to not want to take it. Yeah, I do but know. Yeah, three point four fucking were, billion. Uh, I do know that there were doctors that were uh, writing out. Uh, uh, permission slips or whatever for people without them actually having to take a shot. Yeah. I don't know yeah. any names. I just know people who got them. That nurse that gave 2,500 patients saline yep. injections? She was a saint. Yeah. And uh, she got acquitted. She good. Didn't... That's so she, good. She should not spend a day in prison. So the, it, look, it looks like the January 6th people are going to be released early from yeah, well, uh, something we'll I say. saw yesterday. We'll see. They tried to, you know, that was another part of the debate. They're still pretending. Like the one side pretends and the other side is just incredulous and like, <laughs> like everybody else, like everybody who actually has any kind of objectivity and paid any attention. It's just... Oh, we can't tell you. We don't know how many FBI agents were in the crowd or Homeland Security or, yeah. you know. It was like one or 200. Undercover, undercover police. <laughs> yeah. The dude who was out there, like, vocally um, telling everybody we need to go into the Capitol. Right. Um, and to the Capitol. Definitely, he was in contact with the FBI on paper, on the record. Didn't do anything for what, well, That like, was Ray Epps, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, Mr. Epps, and uh, yeah, this no, she never heard anything of about. Interest, yeah, notice, notice, she never heard anything about the conclusion of that. At least I have. He never got prosecuted. No, we knew he was and never, he never be will. prosecuted he, because oh, they, they were want pretending. everyone to forget about it. They want that to French word. provocateur. So, what do you think about all these uh, lunatic Western countries uh, encouraging? long-range missile deployments <laughs> into yeah. Russia and thinking that's yeah, not think, a, that's not the Trudeau, declaration of World War III. I think Justin Trudeau had an orgasm at the podium when he was talking about it. Good God, did you see his excitement? He was, it's, like, uh, gleeful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just... Um, Give this like we we've already like murdered their whole fucking population, and uh, I I guess they didn't want Ukrainians there. 
is this new Israel we're talking about? That, that, you know what? I was, I was apparently Uncle Hotep knows. <laughs> he knows something really? that I don't, so I might have to get him back on the show. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I was, I was tweeting with him today. I was like, all right. So uh, what is it? Is it going to be the new home for the Palestinians or the new home for the Americans? <laughs> and his response was, you're getting close. <laughs> American refugees coming soon. Yeah. Brought to you by BlackRock. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, look at, the look offices at all of the... Howard and Piven. Look at all the movement of populations that has been done so far. Not again, not just in the United States, but all over the world. I think there's like 60 million illegals here. I don't think it's 30 or whatever Trump said. I think it's like 60 easy. I think it was 30 fucking five, 10 years ago. You know? It's yeah. Uh, When I used to work in construction, there was tons of them. Yeah. Same here. Then, how do you even go about my hard hat. finding that number? That's that's what always boggles my mind. Yeah, because they're undocumented, so they're not they're not willingly going to tell you. Oh yeah, I uh, work for some unscrupulous fuck who, like, if the guy's had a friend, he didn't need no papers, just come in, I'll pay you, I'll give you a check. Yeah, and. Back then, I was like, "Wow, I'm lucky I have a trade." But I don't. Yeah. They're they're passing laws to make unskilled labor able to do trade work now. So to get to get around that, so that undocumented workers can do all that shit. Yeah. Well, hell, Germany is importing a quarter of a million Kenyans that are quote skilled and semi skilled. Their after- Olympic team is going to be. After Busted. saying that they're like, we're going to stop allowing immigration. Like, it's immigration's out of control. But we're going to bring yeah. in 250,000 Kenyans. We're going so to sign a deal, you know, this is where they, some money. It sounds like, I have no knowledge of this, but it sounds like they made this move, the, the people's outcry, to stop it. And then came back and said, well, what if they're like skilled labor and we can use them to be productive and stuff you know could be yeah and so they could get some more in yeah just uh shows you slavery never ended they just uh changed the parameters on it yeah that's that's i'm sure they'll be like working on jobs that uh they're not you know paying a whole lot of money just doing shit living all in slums together that's how Truck they driving. take care of you. That's how government takes care of you. <laughs> it really is. So it's a, it, you know, there's 250,000 people. It's a fucking trap, man. Get out of it. Well, they will be exploited, I'm sure, by someone here. Yeah. Well, um, I saw in the news today that uh, some migrant boat headed for the UK sunk. <laughs> Isn't it, doesn't that happen like at least once a week probably i think Remember it happens more it, often than it doesn't would, and they only highlight a, it when used they want to use it for something it used to be a cuban refugee trying to get to like yeah. florida yeah there well, yeah that, there used to be <clears throat> cuban stories all the fucking time but the, those people were like legit man these people like going over on these boats to uk they're getting like funded to do this shit so no i know well that's what they makes got it the funnier. big boats with the motors and shit <laughs> that's what makes it funnier yeah. poorly funded <laughs> operation well well funded poorly thought out <laughs> why can't they just use the boat that uh took Greta thunberg to the un that was owned by uh was it a Rothschild or was it owned by a Rothschild? <clears throat> Something like that. Yeah. That wouldn't you surprise think, me. I think she think does good? have or it, or more one of those banker families owned the boat. She she does have some connection to a banker family. I can't remember which one it is. It might be Rothschild. Her parents are in showbiz. Oh yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. Not they, surprising. They forced their daughter into performance art. Their, uh, oh, dude, she's, up. she's probably been she, abused. I think she was willing to age. do it, though. Well, hey, if it's I all mean, you've ever known. When, when people are preaching that doom and gloom to you, you may actually believe it. And if you don't have any intellectual curiosity to see what everybody else is saying. Yeah. Well, uh, the other thing it, about it, too, that I think people tend to lose sight of is when they get these kids to do this, if these kids genuine, genuinely believe the things that they are saying... It is because of the fact that they are the textbook definition of naive. They do not have a wealth of experience in life. So they don't have the same frame of reference that say somebody who's 50 years old has, you know, live a little bit, experience a few things. And then you start to understand a little bit more about how the world actually works. And yeah, we do a lot of horrible, really terrible shit, but most of it isn't going to end everything next week. Well, most of this shit is just a large scale population uh, extension of the Ash conformity experiments. Yes. You know, just, preach that this is the thing and even if you're like <laughs> seeing totally different uh data you're uh somehow wrong because the crowd is all saying it's this way so i i don't know scientists uh, only get funded when they're doing the science that people with money fund governments uh charitable organizations supposedly the <laughs> Rockefeller Foundation <laughs> the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation the Carnegie's the Mellons all those motherfuckers yeah well they, Char- they they pulled a peanut in a shell game on on people at some point and I still haven't been able to pinpoint exactly when it was but at some point we swapped out consensus for majority consensus so that the the dissenters while they they i mean obviously we still exist that's one of the reasons why liberty radio is here is to allow the dissenters a platform but it doesn't matter if again there's majority consensus because the majority is just going to run over the minority every single fucking time so we don't we don't have true agreement anymore. We have, you know, a, a bully system essentially. Yeah, well, they definitely transition quickly from keeping everybody uh, on the the regular television media before the internet existed, and they kind of lost control for a couple of years until they were able to figure out how to tighten down the monster that they unleashed, but. I think that uh, it's just a bunch of incompetence trying to pull this off. <laughs> I see it in business. <laughs> um, that has nothing to do with the government. How people who have those uh, MBA degree degrees who went to school with that same, you know, most of them got there because they knew people. Right get these high positions and they really don't know how to fucking do the job. And then they fail, fail, fail. And then they move on to some other friends company. <laughs> so I got to ask you a question, Drizzle. I, I sure. see that there's uh, I I was kind of out of the loop for a while traveling and doing shit. So yeah. I heard there's some type of uh, independent media collaboration going on yeah. and that you're, you're a big skeptic of uh, the intentions of this uh, group. What, what is the group? First off, who's, who's teaming up or is uh, it still? So it's, it's definitely Derek bros. Uh, Cause Derek mm-hmm. bros is the one pushing it. Um, Ryan Christian, uh, Whitney Webb, who together, the three of them, were already last American vagabond, which I I don't see how that's not 
already an alliance, but whatever. Yeah. You know, that's that's apparently like me splitting hairs or something. Um, <laughs> uh, allegedly, James Corbett, although I don't know if I have heard it out of Corbett's mouth yet or not myself. Um, again, I'm not trying to dispute whether or not Corbett is, is part of the alliance. I'm just relaying what I have heard and what I'm trying to remember whether I have heard or not. Um, okay. Allegedly, Richard Grove is also a part of this alliance. I have not heard it myself out of Richard's mouth. Uh, beyond that, uh, I don't have a, a whole lot. I think Steve is a part of it or maybe part of it. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Uh, he's, he's, Steve is more, uh, favorable of it than I am at this point. He also has his questions. Um, there's, there's not been a, a great deal of effective communication about it up to this point, which is yet another thing that I can point to, uh, that would be fuel for skepticism. Uh, the the whole situation has been very um, uh, ham fisted in its handling up to this point, and uh, as far as I can tell, it just does not bode well for uh, future success. That's just my opinion, though. I could be well, completely wrong. Any idea what the model is supposedly with the collaboration? Yeah, not really. No. I There's, I'm guessing. Uh, apparently, that's detail they just haven't really worked out yet. Because they haven't even really actually had an official meeting yet, and everyone just needs to get off their back uh, about it. And yeah, I'm guessing it's a 24-hour news network collaboration with each of them having several hours of the maybe day. Their own, uh, maybe their own uh, internet channel. Like, like yeah, like network, like type. Maybe I, it gets on I, Roku okay. somehow, something like that, you know? I, I could see that. I don't give a fuck if people take ad money because there's a lot of people who um, would, you know, advertise. They're, they're intelligent enough to not be controlled by money and to avoid it, right? I I would think so. You believe that? Money would have I, to get force, forceful eventually, you know? It would be the other – it wouldn't be the caress. It would be the slap, you know, after – I, I've met Derek in person and like hung out with him at some volunteer event we did in some park over outside of Philadelphia, some nature preserve. We helped clean up some trails and then uh, him and Mark Passio did an event that night and gave a speech. And uh, I've, like, I've met uh, Mark on another occasion at a thing in North Jersey, some libertarian party Christmas party function where Jordan page came and rich was there and, uh, hung out with rich, you know, a couple years now, three years in a row for a week at pork fest. They're all solid people, man. I haven't seen, you know, if they're, if they're, uh, putting on a scam, I, I haven't seen it. They've all, yeah. uh, dedicated a lot of their lives to making no fucking money at all because everybody knows unless you're shilling for somebody and I would never seen any of them do that. You, you don't make fucking money. Yeah. It's like you're at the mercy of uh, kind hearted and well off listeners. Really? Yeah. That's I why, mean, that's why I think they're uh, Ryan and Whitney. I, I believe in their integrity and intelligence that they could avoid being entrapped in some kind of legal you know, obligation to, to lie to the people because they took money. You know, I don't think they would go in that trap. If they were to go in that direction, uh, has uh, Ryan ever mentioned if that tenant thing, like he, if he was ensnared, getting you know donation from them or anything? What the I don't know tenant anything media? About yeah, the thing that they're trying to oh, it was Russia. I don't think so. Russia, 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 Russia. I don't. I don't think that group would go anywhere near Ryan. So I don't think he would have to worry about that. They're like demonizing the fake right people like crazy, but they were taking a lot of money from these groups. Like, I mean, I, if you're I, getting a hundred grand for putting out an episode of an internet show, yeah. I'm sorry, I've got some follow up questions. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm being dead serious because that's not like the model that he is promoting on his other shows. So wait a minute, you're you're taking money from a production company 
that has political affiliations and ties to governments and all that sort of shit, but yet you're saying that you don't engage in that type of activity. Well, which is it? It can't be both. Yeah. I mean, I don't begrudge anybody making money. If they can get I don't to either. Pay them. Just be honest about it. Yeah, exactly. There's no exactly. reason anybody should have to lie about the money that they make. If you're a drug dealer, say you're a drug dealer. If, if you're a fucking uh, 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 weapons, uh, what do they call them? The, the dudes that sell guns. Uh, gun runner, arms dealer. Yeah. If arms you're an arms killer. dealer, say you're an arms dealer, like fucking Eric Schmidt does. <laughs> That's the I thing. I can respect like, that. But when Henry you Kissinger. lie about what you do, and then it comes out that you lied about it, don't don't fucking come to me for anything else ever again. Matter of fact, get the fuck out of my face and stay out of it. I don't ever <laughs> want to hear from you ever again. I can't trust you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And if but. people cannot see that about these media personalities by now, I don't think any more evidence is going to change their minds. Those people are, are done. They're, they're believing in a fantasy. They would rather have their comfort. Leave them Absolutely. be. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's a They're shame now. They're about to be gone soon anyway. I'm sorry. It's, it's, the, that, that's the harsh reality of it. You think they're all going to get purged in the next wave when the, yes. uh, when the thought police really come out in yes. force here? They are not built for the new economy. They are not going to survive. That's the whole point. You really think they're, we're that, we're that uh, close to fake dissent being eradicated? Like, uh, it's, it's not, again, it's not that it's going to be eradicated. It's, it's still going to be a thing because the enforcement arm of the state is going to have to have that antithesis. So there is, it's probably already in production at this point. I would not be surprised to find out that it is, but there is going to be a machine that creates the descent for the state to crack down on. Yeah, Some I mean, of you may it. already see it being built right in front of your very eyes. That is oh, going been, to be a thing, a very real thing in the future. And people are been, going to be sacrificed through that machine. And people are going to be too dumb to figure it out. They've been building that since, uh, you know, 9-11, when all that yeah. equipment that they had over in Iraq was uh done with they were brought it back over and were giving it to police departments and militarizing mm -hmm. all the local police departments that would Correct. take their f free grant down you know. to small towns and now everybody's kitted out time to have some fun you know, the, <laughs> the vehicles that can drive through the wall of your house yeah. I haven't seen any tank carriers in my town, fortunately, but doesn't mean they're not hiding in the fire station. <laughs> MRAPs, mobile armored something. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm skeptical at this point. Um, and I'll just go, I'll get it on the record now. All right. So that if there is any question about it at all, we can point right back to this episode. It's right in there. Go fucking listen for yourself. I am skeptical of any call to organize at this point because if you look at the history of dissenter organizations when they start centralizing their operations and coming mm -hmm. up with a hierarchy and figureheads and all of that stupid shit that's when things start going wrong i don't care how smart people think they are history proves otherwise just look so y'all go ahead and have your little fucking uh, popularity party. I hope you all the success in the world. But I don't see it happening. Look at the Food and Drug Administration. Now, if there really was uh, a free and fair internet, I would recommend that you grab all the people with computer skills and start building your own 
thing to tie into the internet. Yep. If you want to continue to access the internet, if well, that's a priority. The ability to quickly exchange information in real time is uh, something that you don't really want to lose. I don't think we have any pigeons trained <laughs> to get our messages to each other. No, but that, that that might be a worthwhile skill to learn. There now are that some cheap, it. cheap radios that uh, that can. What they do is um, they bounce off of repeaters. So they can go hmm. further. You, you get on a repeater network, transmit, you can hit across the country to your homeboy that has that frequency or whatever, I think. You know what it sounds like to me when you just blanket import uh, what you call skilled and semi-skilled laborers into a fucking country mm -hmm. that's far into them? Sounds like a um, extermination force or a... Uh, kind of. Kind of, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, Game's over. We're not playing. Because um, I mean, how how often do you when you hear the uh, the term skilled and semi semi skilled workers, are you thinking of women? Like, is a woman <laughs> the first thing that comes to your mind when I say that? It's a construction crew. That's what I'm thinking. Not that it couldn't be skilled women. Or a workers. demo gonna... crew. They're gonna build something or tear something I'm, down. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Nigerian women aren't pining to get into the construction workforce like uh, American ones are. Maybe so. they'll wear blue hard hats eventually. Maybe blue get hats. Some, get some tools from from the NATO hardware store. I don't know. I think I, I think NATO's going to need their hardware here real soon. I just when does NATO come to the U.S.? NATO's part of the UN, right? <laughs> I mean, the U Not the UN is what I technically what I actually meant. When, when do the UN peacekeeping forces come to the U.S.? You think uh, uh, to quell after, the civil war? Yeah, after, after civil unrest breaks out, after all the right people are dead. I mean, they might already. Te uh, depending on who you ask, Rob, they're already here. They're already here. They're just they're just waiting for their their call to action. They're waiting to oh. go to Ace Hardware, yeah. and then they'll pull the helmets out of their closets or their you and know, remember, whatever. Remember, folks, yep. the the government got like billions of rounds of hollow point ammo. That's right. For no apparent reason, and Department and of Education guns. got hollow point ammo. Millions the, of rounds the, of it. So the, post, um, the postal service did too. Their administration got machine guns. And, yeah. Okay, they're, they're, I, I can almost they gotta, justify that. They got they <laughs> got to stop fucking killing children to try to um, take away people's guns for Christ's but sake. Rob, they they could that's just where the do, best adrenochrome is. You, you, like, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm missing the fucking underlying uh, motives. But uh, if you wanted to cause mass casualty, wouldn't you just go into like a crowded shopping mall at Christmas time? If I wanted to cause mass casualty, I drop a nuke. Well, but I, I like to do things right the first time. So that's just me. I, I don't have any weapons to do such things. So I, uh, I can only speculate why uh, somebody who's unhinged and, really feels like they got to kill people would want to go kill little children like that's that's just like a propaganda thing for the most part yeah if they're they convinced happen, they're gonna they're gonna get some reward uh, in hell for the innocent blood they shed or some crazy shit i you know? absolutely believe they will sacrifice those children not all of them are false flags so to speak and that there's nothing actually there mm -hmm. and crisis actors there's you know the sick motherfuckers that they oh we were in contact with them right um we knew we knew of them uh how's that every single fucking time and they all target children mm -hmm. like w w what kind of contact were you in with them were there hypnosis sessions were there uh <laughs> it's just so um egregious and like, out in the open but you're crazy can, for even suggestion, even suggesting that somebody would be 
nurturing that kind of shit. I can attest that when I was on pharmaceuticals, I felt like zero empathy, sympathy. Like I had like the the idea of it, but I didn't have the feeling of it, you know, at all. No highs just and like, no lows. Just just cut off from like humanity. Like giving a fuck about anybody. Hmm. I was on actually a heavy dose of Ritalin, which is like basically amphetamine, Speed. methamphetamine. Speed. Yeah. You should have been getting a lot of shit done at least. <laughs> well, uh, well, that's. I mean, that that's the trick. That's why they give it to. Um, I figured out one day that I had no like emotions. Like I was at a funeral, and I didn't cry or anything. And I was like, "What the fuck's going on with me?" That's why they give it to the uh, Air Force pilots so they can kill indiscriminately and not really feel it. So afterwards, then they got to live with that guilt the rest of their lives. So they get meth. That makes sense now. Somebody I know yeah. makes more sense now. Thanks for telling me about that. <laughs> That's been a secret of warfare since at least Hitler. I mean, I don't know how much maybe mm -hmm. World War One somebody had figured that shit out, but but both that sides the, of the war were that was the whole sped up. Yeah. That was the whole like blitzkrieg fucking concept. Get them all speeded up so they can just blow through the fucking town and not have to yeah. sleep. And then they have the cleanup crew come after the first, you know, shock and all wave, and then they move on to the next town and do the yeah. same fucking thing. I mean, it's a brilliant strategy for the first three days. Yeah, until they start hallucinating right. and fucking turning on each other. <laughs> Just self-destruct like halfway to the goal. But if you don't give it to them, then they're all fucking strung out. And right. You're not going to get much of a fight out of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Easily taken. I mean, it, you know, if we're being honest, this is a strategy you can only use once. <laughs> After that, you're pretty much done. You guys ever get played a whole Starcraft? new crew. So Starcraft, you're only giving uh, you're only giving speed to the front line guys and the guys behind them when they you know have to take the front line when those guys are dead then they give them the speed. Go. Is that what you're saying? You, <laughs> yep, that's what I'm talking about. You get like an assembly line type of thing going, and just cycle people through. Yeah, I could have been a great general if I had the conscience to do that to people. Feed them through a fucking meat grinder. Right. I, take that hill, boys. Fuck you. I don't want that hell. <laughs> it's a lot of fucking bullets flying from it. Yeah, I don't think people understand me uh, when I say give them hell. <laughs> I'm, not, not, uh, I'm not encouraging them. In the real-time strategy game StarCraft for the PC, um, the Marines had the stim ability, which was basically they would shoot up some meth and fucking run faster and shoot faster. Yeah. And but they would take damage like from it. Yeah, yeah. You lose part, kill them with lose, it. Part, lose part of their life with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I played a lot of StarCraft way back. Right. That's that. what that's what, what you were saying reminded me of. I kept hearing it. Shh. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then you you know, in the the second version of it, you could get the uh, medics to come heal them up after they were messed up. So the recovery yeah. drug. <laughs> I don't know what the recovery drug is for meth, but I, I don't really want to, I don't need to know. <laughs> it's probably got something to do with magic mushrooms, I would guess. You think it pulls you back into focus? But then you're not, you're not really going to be killing anything at that point. I knew someone that was going through meth withdrawal, and they would stay up all night and carb load and eat a bunch of sugar. And, and just, they, were, they couldn't get any sleep. And, wow. Uh, I gave them some mushrooms and they slept that night like a baby. It was the first time in like three weeks. Jesus. Uh, you all. know, like they didn't stay up for three weeks, but they just had, you know, trouble sleeping. They get shitty, up shitty sleep for three weeks. They'd be craving sugar and, and fucking carbs because like they're not getting any speed. So they're like, I want to get high up sugar. I don't fucking know. But they, they would get up in the middle of the night and eat cereal and shit. But well, everybody. Gave them just Everybody. a modest amount of mushrooms, and they like got peaceful, and they slept Everybody. after that like normally. 
I thought everybody knew you go from the meth and then you like go down to the coke and then, you know, get yourself a little H and then you fucking work into the mushrooms. <laughs> you don't get strung out first, Rob. Come on. <laughs> Well, no, well, no, no. That's, that's it's only if you want to live like a rock and roll lifestyle and then you go that route. Step then, down. Because once you we get call... the cool thing is like you can do the mus mushroom therapy multiple times. So you can you can repeat the process for quite a while. Um, I just wouldn't recommend doing it as many times as Keith Richards has. Although he seems to be doing fine. So Isn't he like 80 now. Something like that. Yeah, that. His fucking drug use killed him. <laughs> I think it preserved him. I, maybe. I think at some point, like in his 50s, he just became pickled. Maybe so he now just... he's going to be around for like 400 years. Straight maybe ether he's... in his veins. Yeah. Maybe he's just the devil. I don't know. Seems like there's a devil. There's a lot of people worshiping a devil, at least in this fucking society. Yeah. And I, I think used it's like to think a, it was it's Tom like a, Cruise. It's like a Wi-Fi network they all get on, and they're like <laughs> Anyways, synced up. And you're like, "Oh, that's cool." The way they like were synced up. You mean but when he went into like, oh. when he went into Scientology, didn't give it away that he wasn't smart enough to be the devil? <laughs> no, it was it was the Oprah appearance. Mm. That was when I figured it out. I was like, "Oh no, that's no mm -mm. devil would never do that." That's drawing That's too a, much attention to yourself. It's like a gay guy trying to like overcompensate and right. pretend to be straight. Right. Jump up and down. Wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they were just, I think he was just dating Katie Holmes at the time. Or was it Katie? Whoever the hell it was. I think, yeah, I think he was. I think they were still just dating at the time. And he, you know, got up and proclaimed his love. that was love before and... he started smacking her around. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> made me think uh like later on when i saw the fucking Chappelle video or the Chappelle show thing the skit with uh rick james stomping all over the fucking couch <laughs> with his muddy boots <laughs> it's like oprah should have oprah should have oprah should have broke his fucking legs <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah fuck yeah. your couch oprah <laughs> Remember that movie man. Far and Away he made with Nicole Kidman? He was no. like a he was like an Irish immigrant and he was a boxer. I just remember he was a boxer and, he, and it, it showed him showed <laughs> him boxing five, a lot. He was like real fit and everything. Five foot six boxer, huh? Yeah. Total so but he was he was boxer. real fit for the role and he was he was throwing punches and stuff and you know whatever. But every every time he'd throw a, like a punch, he'd go <laughs> it was like, you know what I mean? Like, you couldn't, you know, it's supposed to be like, roof, roof. you know, and he's like, yeah, holy. I mean, he's not a terrible, he's not a terrible actor, except every movie he runs in. <laughs> I, uh, my, my favorite movie I've ever seen him in was Tropic Thunder. He was the fucking funniest shit in that movie. He, he yeah. was, he was, I do have to give it yeah, to him on that. He was really good in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was great in that movie Legend when I was a kid. I think that movie was Yeah, he was good. decent in that. I liked him in Risky Business. I have to admit that. As a child of the 80s. When was it that he, he uh, went into that Scientology? It was like all the like closet uh, homosexuals in Hollywood started joining. Him and John Travolta. Will Smith. Let's see if we can find out. Yeah, Will Smith's a Scientologist too, isn't he? Was a strange, uh, is strange. Is he really? Person. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, Jesus Christ! I type in yeah, Tom been. to Wikipedia, and he's the first thing that pops up: Tom Cruise, and then Tom Brady. Yeah. Wow! As, as if no Tom other Toms Garrett? have ever uh, existed. Poor Tom Skerritt. <laughs> oh shit! He's a cancer. I did not know that. There's a lot of people that are a cancer on society, but you <laughs> no, mean the actual I, I, no. the zodiac yeah, sign? Yes, yes. His birthday is okay. uh, two days before mine. No wonder I hate him. 
sound like a common thing. Fuck that motherfucker. Well, no, because his so his birthday is the day before a national holiday. My birthday is the day after a national holiday. So obviously everybody remembered his fucking birthday because it was the day before. <laughs> but everybody, you know, they always got gassed out on the fourth and and fuck that motherfucker. Imagine if your birthday was on New Year's or Christmas. That would suck. Christmas would be the worst. That would be just as bad. Yeah. I agree. It'd be like your parents would give you the same amount of shit they would give you for your birthday or Christmas, but not combined. And then the whole year would suck. Having to share after the share the uh fake Jesus birthday is uh gotta be a bummer. Unless you're some Oh shit. All right, here we go. You're Tom, right. I found according it. to scripture. You're right, according to scripture. Tom Cruise. That's Nimrod's birthday. Yeah. And the son, Osiris. Yeah. Tom Cruise was converted to Scientology by his first wife, Big Nicole Tits Pittman? Mimi Rogers. Oh, Mimi Rogers. In 1986. Right after Top Gun? Yeah. That's what I thought. He's an old school guy, but Will Smith's been it for 14 years, 15 years. Yeah, they were uh, they were briefly married in the in the mid eighties. <laughs> I always forget that. Will Smith since Independence Day, I think. Uh, when they get their big movie, mm. that would make Loser. sense. That would make sense because that's the yeah. point where you're you're where really going to have from to start here? handling them. Yeah. Yeah, and where do I go from here? Is what they're thinking. I'm on top of my thing. Now I'm in the secret society bullshit. Now I need right. to yeah. Now I need to go to some sci-fi book created religion by a hack writer. Hubbard openly said that he wanted to scam people with his bullshit. Yeah, he did. I I sure as hell remember as a kid in like the eighties, the fucking Dianetics commercials were like playing on like all the, nonstop, uh, nonstop. The then, answers we're back to the price is right. <laughs> oh my like, god that's right this? they were these commercials were on everything yeah i mean i remember all as a over kid daytime thinking, gotta, television you I remember saying it's a little kid i gotta get a hold of this fucking book it's got Saturday all the answers cartoons, punky brewster that was the only place you were safe from those commercials they were on everything else all day insane so welcome truth, truth bear. bear what's on your mind tonight man Oh, not much, man. I, mean, I was just uh, joining the chat. <clears throat> I know that uh, I was just listening to uh, the um, uh, book lunch party for uh, Zoe's book for the Thrill Kill Cult. Oh, yeah. Um, man, great, great show. Great show. And it's still ongoing right now, I think, too. Yeah. Oh, nice. What did they do? Um, well, well, they were um, uh, promoting her book that just came out, and they had a full on, like, uh, like, uh, they did a full on like a uh, media show for her book. They did, <laughs> they did like a video and stuff for her, for the book coming out. And it was really great. It was uh, really awesome. And then also, um, you know, Scott's music um, from Rebunked, man, he, he, he is, he is a talented musician. That mm -hmm. guy can, he's got some great music. It is awesome. I loved it. I got to hear one of the songs uh, the first night I was in Pueblo. We were at Angela's house, and he was there, and uh, he played one of his songs for us. It's pretty good shit. I, but yeah, so I'm just, I'm I'm just joining the chat, Scotty. so I don't know. Yeah, so I'm just joining the chat, so I don't really know exactly what, what you guys have been uh, just conversing on. You know, oh. I, I switched on over. Yeah, but, we've um, been... We've been yeah talking about all sorts of stuff uh but it's you got you got the stage now we we mm -hmm. want to know what you want to talk about What's on your uh, mind? well just i mean uh, i mean you know uh, like like everything it's just um you know the the current news of what's going on today you know i'm trying to I'm trying to keep up i'm trying well, to process things yeah so you, you might not know uh, that the Netherlands today declared a state of emergency regarding their immigration clusterfuck. 
Mm. <laughs> really? Like, we got too many. Do not come. They they actually did the camel Harris thing. They do not come. They, <laughs> they don't have anybody to do the second half of that, so it's probably okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious how they're yeah. how they're going to get away with doing that, considering um, the EU is actually the one who decides their immigration policy. Uh, how exactly yeah. do they plan to pull that off? I don't know. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I it think seems like immigration all... has been a, a crazy thing where you get these influx of individuals that coming into certain countries um, that either they're, they're flooding in and they don't assimilate to the culture that's going on there and that there's disruption. Um, and it seems like it's, it's a big plan. Um, but um, I've always believed, in, and this is, this is my take, this is my opinion, is that I believe that uh, as we as humans can and should be able to uh, travel to any part of the region of the world that we want to, you know. Um, but I've always said this th as well, you know, when, when I go to certain regions, I respect the culture. I'm not trying to change their culture. I'm trying to respect their culture. I'm trying to, to embrace their culture and to experience the culture, right? Um, I'm not trying to change anything, but it seems like the the this immigration issue is to disrupt. And that's a difference. Whereas individuals who just says, hey, you know what? I want to go down to South America and experience what, what those guys are doing down there. Or I want to go to the Middle East or to South, Southeast Asia <clears throat> and experience that culture. I'm not trying to, we're not being, I'm, no one's sending me in a wave of other individuals to go and try to change anything or to gain my vote to, like what they're doing here in the United States to change my vote, to get more free things, to promote a certain party or anything like that. Like it's just people um, wanting to um, enjoy uh, uh, other parts of the world that, that um, I think we all have the freedoms to do. We, we, we should be able to go and, 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 and freely um, travel and experience these things. Well, you can for the most part if you have the money to do it, but um, it seems like what, what are your thoughts as far as like uh, as far as like we'll travel and stuff? I think I think everybody yourself. should get to travel the world, but I mean, we decide to make bombs and kill everybody, and you know, try to. Maybe the uh, kids asked for it, Rob. <laughs> yeah, that's what all the kids asked for for Christmas. Why don't you? Um, go kill a bunch of children over in this country. So there's more for me. I, I, <laughs> I, I think the real shame of globalism is you can go travel the world now and there's a Starbucks, there's a McDonald's. You yeah. Know. The corporatization, so, corporatization of it. Yeah. The, the homogen, homogeneity. Homogenization. The, yeah. Yeah. Homogenized. Everything's the same everywhere. That sucks balls. Well, there used to be a thing when people yeah. came to the country. Yeah. You know, like um, you can go to uh, certain cultures, right? And and they'll be like, "Hey, don't worry about don't worry about eating the food because you can always get a McDonald's somewhere, right?" <laughs> I guess, but Ugh. um, there there is people are missing out if they don't if they don't try to um, taste the foods, um, uh, enjoy the culture, um, right. experience what they're doing there, and. Um, that's well, a big shame that that's what a lot of especially americans don't understand about yeah. these massive multinationals like mcdonald's like starbucks is the whole reason why they became multinationals was to gain a footprint in all of those foreign countries so that they could begin to subvert the culture there just like they had done here so that when like Americans go to travel abroad, they feel more comfortable because they see the, the same sites that they see at home. They see the golden arches, right? Or they see a uh, fucking lady victory or whatever the hell the, the Starbucks logo is, you know, yeah. or, or whatever Ruby Tuesdays in insert fucking corporate logo here. Yeah. That's the whole yeah. point. Well, yeah. I uh, personally hope to see Starbucks, yeah. who 
paid their new CEO yeah, absolutely. some obscene hundred and plus million dollar package to come work for them uh, to help rejuvenate a fucking coffee business. Yeah. It's all you know, shitty uh, coffee. Uh, so we're, if we're talking about geopolitics and stuff like that, you know, right now, um, I didn't get a chance to watch any of the uh, debates that were going on between Trump and um, Kamala Harris. I didn't either. But I haven't watched any um, of it willingly. Yeah, and um, and I'm glad, you know, I, I've listened to some people that were post posting some stuff online that they were saying about certain things, and I'm just not interested in what they got to say. I don't, I'm, I don't care what Trunks got to say. I don't care what Kamala Harris has got to say. Um, but when you look at the banter between the back and forth of what they're saying is it, you know, from the little bits that I did get, it just, it was just ridiculous. Like, so I, 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 I was. I was driving today and I was listening to uh, uh, T Lav, and um, he he was talking about a lot of this stuff. And I I thought to myself, I was like, man, you know what? You know what would be cool? It's already a little bit too late, but I was like, man, what if they were made a T-shirt that said like Trump, right? Trump, and then you know how they got like Trump, and then you know JD Vance, you know, and the the the, the signs and the banners, mm -hmm. like it would say Trump and then Harris. And either way, you lose. And I thought, man, that'd be a great T-shirt <laughs> to to have Trump and then Harris, you know, in the same in the same thing. But then mm -hmm. on the very bottom, either way, you lose. And uh, I thought, man, that'd be a great T-shirt to to walk around with because I would get a lot of, uh, hey, what do you mean, Trump or Harris? You know, actually, I think you probably get started. a lot of people going, hey, man, I like your shirt. Yeah, that's what happens those, to those. me when I wear Liberty Radio T-shirts uh, out really? around town. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. Yeah, well, I have, especially like the supermarket all the time. Cashiers really? are like, "Oh wow, that's a great shirt." Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'll look at your. Uh, I haven't looked at your um, your your uh, store there, but I'll, I'll take a look at that. But and I'm not. I'm not trying thing. to like toot my own horn or anything. But I, no, no, I would no, no. like to think that the the designs that I create are at least somewhat thought provoking. Yes, thought provoking. It, it, yes. it seems that my experience out in the world actually wearing it uh, kind of proves that out. Is is what I'm yep. trying to say? Yeah. Like people yeah. notice it, it catches their eye, and they they actually like take it. like if it's something where words are printed on it, they take the time to read it. Yeah. And, and that's what you you just you said something very keen is there is, is thought provoking you got you got to provoke thought if you just saw a, a banner that said Trump you know or Harris immediately your your mind would go to that thing mm -hmm. um, but when you got something that's conflicting it's like Trump Harris like what like that then there's there's the thought that provokes it and Grand Grand Theft Liberty Radio is like what like what you know that that provokes the 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 thought process and logic that we should all have and that everybody should be exercising. I think that, that that's one of the things that, that the, let's just say the globalist are baking on is that we don't have the ability to process thought and process logically, you know, different conflicts. I Not guess. at high levels. No, no. That and to communicate the knowledge that we have, you can't directly communicate it you have to like plant a seed that makes them have a realization on their own yeah and that's tricky i try to beat people over the head with it and it doesn't work that's almost yep. exactly what i said tuesday night on tnp live yeah you know so so, so one of the crazy things is is like here in florida there's there's certain pockets or certain areas well i'll i'll drive down to and i'll i'll go to the big box store or something and um there'll be there's this one area where they're all about trump and they'll set up on the same corner and they're all out there with their flags and stuff like that and they do this every week and and i've wanted to stop in and say hey man you know um and just question them about trump it's like hey what do, you, what do you think he actually did you know what do you what do you what do you know about what who he actually put into his cabinet what do you actually know about who he uh, is aligned with and I thought to myself, I was like, okay, maybe I don't, I, I've, I've scared myself out of doing that because I don't want to get into a fist fight. You know, <laughs> that's the last thing I want to do is get into no, a fist fight. Don't go in being stuff. confrontational. You know? 
know? yeah, but not be confrontational about it. But um, Just they're out be there. the asshole they're that like there. points shit out that you know is going to make them uncomfortable, like I would. Yeah, and 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 here in Florida, <laughs> these guys, these guys, these guys in here in Florida, like they, get, I'm sure this is probably all over the the states, um, but they will post big old flags on their on their trucks and they'll ride with huge flags trump you know like like and they'll have one side trump and the one side the american flag and they'll just drive around town and it's just like you see this stuff and you're just like oh my goodness <laughs> um but um yeah yeah uh, i i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to get into a fight about this stuff but i would like to engage in in conversation are they are they like that, Florida uh, rednecks? Is that what they are? Probably, yeah. I, yeah, I would say that. Yeah, would you say might that you I, might risk a fist fight. Yeah, trying to you know. poke fun at a Florida redneck. Yeah. Try to tell me Trump and the real deal, is boy. There, you got You got a. Uh, hmm. What's the, what's the best way I can put this? Being a, a city boy that grew up in the country, um, you you got to know you got to know which bear you're poking, intimately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In order to yeah, be able yeah. to get away with it. Yeah. 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 That's the yeah. best advice I can give you. And that's fine, you know, and, that, and, and you know, and that's fine too, because uh, in the end, when they come, when it comes down to it, you know, and, and uh, I actually experienced this when I went, when I went to, to Texas, I went to Texas uh, to go visit my friend um, during the uh, solar eclipse. And one thing he told me, he was just like, Hey man, don't tell anybody you're from California. <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, you know, like, uh, okay, you know, because it seems like they would, you know, especially if they find out that, you know, if 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 we were to come down to it and find out that I'm not originally from Florida, you know, um, and that I, I and and I am from Los Angeles, you know, uh, what they would say, you know, and I don't want that hassle, you know. Well, the concern is coming directly from California to Texas, changing their local politics. They're 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 being invaded by tax refugees, well, but that yes. want the same social welfare structures that are going to lead to the same taxes, and then they're going to move on to Utah or something. Uh, well, there's, good news. There's good news there's, for them. Go ahead, Rob. Good news for them. There's. Uh, I think Rob's muted. Free. Robbie, Free invitation. Robbie, 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 Robbie. Am I? No, I hear you. Oh, do you? Okay, man. I'm not, I'm not catching on my end. But okay, go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, maybe lose my train of thought. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah. I'm so excited about? for that blunt you were smoking, bro. <laughs> maybe. Shit. Maybe it'll come back to me. All right. Well, I think the the other thing too is uh, there there is a um, what I would call a Texas mentality uh, that is that is very much linked to um, uh, uh, it, just kind of your general uh, nationalistic type of ide- ideology, right? Like it's okay. uh, it's a part of people's identities. It's it's how uh, it's a descriptor that they use uh, when talking about themselves. So it's something very, very deeply ingrained in a lot of the, the psyches of the people that live here, um, which can uh, sometimes turn people into arrogant pricks themselves. So they think they're better than those people from California. There's a lot of that that yeah. goes around here, too. Because again, not originally being from the area, yeah, I've experienced a little bit of that. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Don't have the right you, accent. Uh, what part of what part of Texas are you from? From again? What's that? What part of Texas are you in? I'm in East Texas. East Texas. Okay. Yeah. I'm basically in Louisiana, uh, but if the people around here heard me say that, they would want to lynch me. <laughs> You're not wearing cowboy boots? Nope. You've got cowboy boots on? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> not trying to assimilate into the culture one bit. I don't see any reason to in a town that is dying. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Also, I'm a bit salty because I have a meeting with the uh, tax assessor Tuesday morning about my property taxes. Oh, really? So I'm starting to get amped up for that. Yeah, man. You just mentioned property taxes. Like, um, um, and I don't know what the conversation is going to be about or what your issues are, but. um, Oh, they're trying um, to charge me through the nose for uh, a building that I overpaid a good bit for. Yeah, you know, um, and um, again, I'll, I'll go into this a little bit about um, property taxes, but um, there's there's very good information about property taxes and how ad valorem taxes are not property taxes. And so over the decades since the 1950s, we have been you know, conned into believing that we have to pay property taxes, ad valorem taxes on on a property that you own okay and one of the guys that was um here in florida his name's steve emerson great guy i've talked to him before he's kind of he's kind of out there a little bit but um he's he's a great guy and one of the things is is that um he he actually uh had a neighbor he said that he had a neighbor and she was an older woman like in her 70s or something and her her husband had passed away and she was selling her property because she was going to move. And he was just like, oh, why are, you, why, are you, why are you moving? And he, she said that she couldn't afford it anymore. And he asked her, he's like, I thought you guys have already paid off the, the property. And she's like, yes, it's, it's the taxes. And so he started looking into it. And then that's where he discovered that the property taxes are not, um, they're not, they're not legal. And um, when he looked into the law about it, it was basically on the way on how you do this. And the way you do this is by challenging them on the tax code. And if you challenge them on the tax code and just by the tax code alone, it will state in there that for one, you get it for like when you have a property, you got to do an assessment. Right. And every year we get an assessment on our properties, right? right? But no one ever signs that assessment. You're just told this is the value of your property based on property values. And right. it's completely Which is what they're against, trying to do. Yes, and it's completely against the tax code. So once you start challenging them on that, then you can – and I'm not saying to not pay your taxes. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that. Um, but once you do that, then you can – Start getting the information that you actually need to actually take them to court and show them that it's illegal. Um, so, for me, because I'm I'm a disabled veteran, um, my my property taxes were taken. They were uh, they were taken off the books. Um, now, if it wasn't for that, and I was prepared to do this, I was prepared to do this. If they weren't gonna, if they weren't going to allow that, I was prepared to take them to court and start this process of okay. Show me the assessment. Uh oh. Sound just dropped out, Truth Bear. Yeah, I can't hear him either. Damn it. He was getting to the good part, too. <laughs> I think he might be, uh, I'm not sure. All right. You know what? I heard a click. Did you hear the click, Rob? I didn't hear the click, no. but I, w- I wanted closure on that antidote. <laughs> you might have to drop out and come back in, Truth Bear. I'm not sure what happened. I think uh, I think Bluffdale uh, hit the uh, the old uh, seven second delay button on Truth Bear. That's a damn shame. It was Uncle Scam. Yeah, we were getting somewhere. <laughs> I mean, you start talking about you, uh, being a disabled vet and all of a sudden and uh, getting out of your property taxes. And next thing you know, you can't hear him anymore. <laughs> call her. Call her. <laughs> I might try that on Tuesday, though. Be like, yeah, can you show me in the tax code where uh, the, this method of assessment is uh, is what you're supposed to be doing? See, here's the thing. They doubled the the supply of U.S. dollars, mm-hmm. so therefore, 
everything's worth twice as much. It might take a while to catch up to that point, but it will happen. Also, coupled with that, countries are ditching the dollar. Yeah, my house is worth oh. basically twice what it was um, five years ago. So, Which is not a good thing. Might seem like a good thing. It's not like the time they built a golf course up the street from mom's house and it doubled in value quickly. No. This is different. The money, it's the money that's devalued, not the house that's increased. And your income is not going to match that doubling. And your savings aren't going to double. They're, they're halved. Your savings are halved. So you're fucked. We're fucked. And they're going into the rental economy and we're losing everything. And this is part of it. And I think that... Um, that the price controls and all the the immigration over over uh, loading all the welfare systems it's a, it's a planned collapse. That's Us just um, a digital digital currency bailout after the blah blah blah, and they change a lot of things and they get a lot of guns. They confiscate a lot of guns, and what they have to break backs. what they have to break is the will mm. of the patriotic American who had the rights enshrined in the Constitution. That has to go away. For the new, well, the new talking order. about hmm. talking about your constitutional rights makes you a terrorist, according to the Department of Homeland Security. That's right. FBI. I'll pay the ticket in cash, and then they'll give me another ticket. I guess. Then I'll quote the Bible, and they'll give me another ticket. And then maybe, maybe if you're lucky, they'll send you off to a re-education camp and get you thinking more in line with the state. Before the rat bites, <clears throat> no, that the rat bites will come at the same time. But that's kind of part of what's going to make you love the state. They're going to make me condemn Julia, my love. <laughs> well, just make you sure know. you take five minutes to stare at the screen and hate. It doesn't matter at this point. You still get two choices: you either get the. Uh, Kamala or Trump, you can hate for your five minutes every day. But pretty soon, you're not going to have that choice. So fucking take advantage of that today. Switch back and forth and hate both. <laughs> right on, brother. I think they zapped him. <laughs> I really do. I mean, he was talking about tax codes and shit. I, yeah, hot... he was talking about actual information that people can use. Yeah. And when you do that, that's big no-no, especially when it comes to the TAX. He was also on a cell, also on a cell phone inside a building, so uh -huh. I could have also taken taken him down. Yeah, that could have been. That could have been it. Hey, he might he not is. have Verizon. Uh, I, I couldn't hear you guys, and I don't know if you. Yeah, guys we couldn't hear, hear you either. Wait, like wait. you were just, you had just got to the part where you were going to go through the process of taking the city to court, and bam, oh. you got okay. zapped. Okay, yeah. So, um, so uh, uh, here in Florida, there's a guy that I met. I did you. I don't know if you guys heard this or not, but there's a guy named Steve Emerson. Yeah, and he's he's kind of famous here in Florida because he actually challenged the courts here on property taxes and got his neighbors and his friend and also his property taken off the tax books and for ad valorem taxes. Um, and um, um, so there's a good website, uh, uh, or actually I'm saying um, a good guy to contact about this would be Alphonse Fagiolo. And that may be something that, that maybe you want to get in contact with Driz. Alphonse is doing great work on challenging the tax code and hmm. and they zapped him again holy shit <laughs> alphonse fagiolo they zapped you again man i can send you his uh telegram i uh i'm a subscriber oh, yeah? back in back in the beginning during covid's uh ugly phase where they were getting ready to try to fire everybody he was recommended as someone who uh was giving good advice on what you should do legally uh should i knock him out yeah he, he's in and out all right yeah, he thinks he's talking i know that's why i 
I, I don't want him to keep going. I'd rather I'd rather kick him out and have him come back in than have him sit there for five minutes talking to himself. <laughs> you know. But Alphonse Alfonso Fagiolo. Fagioli, I'm sorry. I was uh, following his stuff because he was giving people advice. Other people were showing like exemption forms they had put in. and But there was also a whole lot of other things about fighting traffic tickets and fighting uh, okay. all kinds, all kinds of different legal um, things. Basically just sticking it to the man in general. Yeah. I'd getting like after. Yeah, a lot. Of, I mean, a lot of what I browsed through was like getting affidavits um, done, and then presenting them when the police are like, you know, flat-footed. Like they end up dismissing dismissing your case because you have an affidavit and they don't have um, a good rebuttal to it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not quite sure <clears throat> how I'm going to structure my argument yet. I haven't even actually gone over um, any of the paperwork. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> what difference does it make, gentlemen, at this point? I'd like to bring this up. This is a book by Barbara Olson called The Final <laughs> Days of the Clinton Administration. It's about me. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll have you know, she uh, uh... aboard a certain flight. On September 11th. No <laughs> shit. Yes. At her Allegedly. To Allegedly. Allegedly. Anyway, butter cookies. Uh, recipe. Uh, hot sauce. Wow. Former Secretary of State, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. I didn't know that Barbara was going to happen. No. Hillary was the, Clinton. Was the book? Oh, yeah, I'm talking about the book was by Barbara oh. Olson. Apparently, that's what Hillary said. I'm, I'm just <laughs> going off of what she said. It's amazing how many people coincidentally committed suicide or had plane crashes. I think they're that cursed. Some... I really I yeah. think they're cursed people. I mean, I like, saw that old just, Brady. That, they just tried to Brady do good, bunch. you know? The old Brady Bunch episode where they find the and they go to Hawaii and they find the the cursed idol. Yep. I think that's what happens yep. to the Clintons. They I think, were on their I honeymoon. Probably what it is is Bill got one of those monkey paws, and he just got <laughs> attached to it. He won't let go of it. You know, bro. Some crazy I, bird was just in here coughing, and she she gave me this. She dropped this on her way. She stumbled down the stairs coughing. Uh, was it the bird with black feathers? And that horrible <laughs> cackle. Yeah, yeah. It was it was very yeah. scary. I was glad that my child was already an adult. Um, but she I don't know who this lady is, but it says something about she died like a week before it was published or something. I don't know why. Huh. Isn't that I'm surprised. I'm surprised and, uh, it didn't get I'm surprised it got published, really. At that that point. weird bird woman with the cough, she left me these uh Obama sneakers? Yeah, I don't I don't understand what was on her Is it mind. Christmas? But What's going on? I just changed. I apparently I needed these. Yes, uh yes, yes, and you can. can something with yes. a can. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wear them to the, the basketball game. There you go. And I'm gonna take my hot sauce in case, you know, just in case. Just in case. Keep it in your purse. Yeah. You, know, mm -hmm. you I mean, never know. I might want to steal their sneakers from you. Hold hold you up on your way into the game. Leave you walking in paper bags. So it's a good thing, you know, we're real close and city wise. I will come I'll come to that venue. I'm I'm a <laughs> little bit concerned about Truth Bear. Because he hasn't come back yet. Well, he's been dealt with. Okay, <laughs> I called a couple people while you guys weren't paying attention. So, I know there's a Fed in here somewhere. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> 
You have no my idea. friends are like, you don't want to meet these people. They're just fed handlers. When they get you alone, they're going like, to get you to say I've some already stuff. met these people. They're not that smart. What if I I'm talk like, I can't them. wait to what meet if... these people, man. Shit. Finally, yeah. somebody I can talk to without like dumbing it down to be accepted, not be treated oh. like Copernicus no. or something, whoever the fuck. The, <laughs> the, uh, the play is to like draw them in and uh, let them talk a bunch of dumb shit. And then, you know, turn around and be like, you know, I think it would be better if you did it to make a statement. I, I'm, I don't want anything to do with this stuff. This is like your fight, dude. Yeah. I think you should get some people and uh, keep like, it independent of me. This is your moment. This is your moment, dude. <laughs> this is what you were built for. It's the whole reason you became an agent. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I, 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 I like into it. it. I like it when people try to use the verbal jujitsu on me. I just <laughs> fucking laugh at them. Yeah, you're like you're pretty sharp. You're pretty like uh, yeah. in the moment. That's what John Perez you're always said. Quick. You're quick on the draw. Yeah. I trust his judgment. He was married to a fantastically beautiful woman. Shout out Barb and John wherever you are. I'm so I high. hope you guys are still alive. I hope you didn't fall for this shit. Apparently. Reiner probably did, but I don't think while. you guys would have. Well, it seems like there's like a new wave of uh, mysterious illnesses kicking in just all this time later from so people mysterious. who just, the people who just got the original to what, whether what, they were forced or fell for it. What could be causing it, do you think, Rob? Um... You know, probably sleeping, taking naps in the afternoon, I think. Gardening. Gardening. Yeah. Vibrators. Vibrators being, are a huge one. Being in the sun for more than five minutes. Uh, breathing. You know, I heard recently that walking is just not good for you at all. You shouldn't no. do it. Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. Eggs and butter are bad. Walking's bad. Yeah. Cricket tofu paste. Mm. Well, didn't uh, that mother's group that's always testing foods find that some stuff they're advertising as non-GMO chickpeas were uh, had like the highest level of glyphosate yeah. of anything that they, uh, they'd ever tested. <laughs> yeah. And that's something that you're buying to like minimally process. You know? Yeah. And you trust like, it. So you give it to your baby. Some shit yeah, like that. So you can make your own hummus with it rather than, the, you know, not knowing what they put in there. So you can take yeah. the chickpeas and do it, but then you find out it's got a toxic level of glyphosate in it. I found out that, uh, I was buying, I think it was like Newman's own organic tea, black tea or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, one of those watchdog places had it tested and they were like, Oh my God, it's full of fucking pesticides and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Dude, I, I was, I was floored when I found out that Bob's red mill had such high levels of glyphosate. Cause I was told that was one of the brands that you could trust. And what glyphosate is doing in my opinion is stripping the nutrients from the food and from you from the and from you your while it's in your body, yes, in, in, correct. From you while it's in your body, causing you to be nutrient deficient, which opens the gateway for numerable innumerable diseases. Correct. Numerous. Fucking it's it's fucking Agent Orange. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, it was invented to clean the pipes in like steam engines and shit because it would leach the fucking calcium and iron and whatever off the fucking side of the pipe. Well, the, the and then worst they're like, part of, spray it on our food. Let it soak in and then eat it. Well, well, they were using it as a fertilizer slash uh, insecticide on all the plants. Like, can you imagine what you have to spray chemically wise to keep fucking bugs from touching your stuff at all? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, like, it's like the, the old experiment, putting a piece of butter outside next to a piece of margarine 
and you know mm -hmm. some other fake fucking butter and the animals won't touch the fake shit Mar margarine was invented to fatten turkeys and it killed the birds so they decided to sell it to us two chemicals removed from plastic i thought it was one but i mean in it chemistry could be down to one at this point i, was, I, haven't, I haven't touched margarine in 30 years probably I so i have raised no clue on margarine you know, meth is like one chemical away from you Extra catching your, ca catch, catching yourself on fire in a Home Depot bathroom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I haven't heard I haven't heard any of those feel good stories about. I met a guy who <laughs> who saw. I don't kids. think the kids are doing much meth these days, Rob. I don't I, think that's still I, a thing. I I beg to differ. I think it's really? probably. I, I around guess. my hood, there's a lot of meth going on. Still, kids on meth. Oh yeah. Oh wow. I mean, I know a dude years ago who him and his buddies would do meth all the time. Meth gets and, a hold uh, of you. If it's a fad six years ago, there's motherfuckers are hooked. Doesn't matter. And through another friend, same group of fucking weirdos, uh, another dude got so like whacked out he thought the fucking police weren't answering his phone calls about the people that he thought were there like watching him even though nobody gave a fuck about him <laughs> and wow. he was set he was sending one of my buddies uh, text messages that he like sent me the screenshots of of that he was up on the roof of his house watching these motherfuckers and if they came into his yard again he was gonna fucking hog tie him <laughs> wow. jump off jump off the roof and hog tie him it's like, damn, dude, you've been up for way too many hours. <laughs> dude, my one, my one good buddy that uh, would get really paranoid when we were doing meth. Um, it turns out his paranoia was uh, justified because one night when me and my buddy Matt left his apartment at like, I don't know, quarter to five in the morning or something after we had been up all night on a bender. Uh, about 15 minutes after that, 15, 20 minutes, 30, maybe, uh, he got raided. Fucking cops busted his door down. Ouch. Fucking raided the place. Yeah. It was like yeah. they were waiting for us to leave or something. It was kind of spooky. <laughs> oh, it was like, wow. If we had stayed just 20 minutes longer, we would have been toast. There's one more rail for the lot for the rugged road. Yeah. And then 20 minutes of conversation later, knock, knock or kick in the yeah, door. I'm pretty sure it? there was no knock, knock. It was just thunk. no, no knock permit. <laughs> Could have been. I mean, yeah, that was, uh, let me see. When the hell did he work at that restaurant? That might've been early 2000s. Could have been one of my brothers back in the day was selling weed and uh him and his buddy were sitting on the couch and ordered a pizza delivery smoking a joint and uh one of his roommates got fucking busted for coke or something and knew the detective from high school and set my brother up to sell the detective a bag of weed made him weigh it out on a scale because he said it looked short and then you know, a couple months later, he's uh, sitting there waiting for the pizza delivery, and he goes to get the door, and it's the cops. <laughs> oh, damn. That would suck. He didn't have any product, but Steve, like, a shake of seeds and stems, and they tried to, like, weigh that out as part of the thing. He got it expunged because he didn't have any product, luckily for him. But, uh,. I'm just thinking, how much would it suck? You're you're hungry. You're going to the door expecting a hot pizza, and instead, fucking John well, Popo. Well, while they were there searching his place, the pizza did come. <laughs> oh, so he did get to eat it. All right. No, no, oh. he didn't get to eat it. Oh, the cops they, ate it then. Yeah, okay. They they they, they made him pay for it. And, of course uh, they did. His his buddy, I think, who was sitting there with him, was free to go because he didn't have anything on him. 
But yeah, now it's legal in the state. Well, I was terrified of getting caught with weed. Like back when I had a lot. And then trying to get a well, deal, shit. I'd buy a lot. You know, back I'd buy at least day. a half ounce just trying to get a deal, but that's the felony level, you know? Dude, back in back in the day, uh where I grew up, if you got busted with an ounce, that was distribution. So you yeah. were looking at serious time. Like an ounce yeah, was if, not if you considered had a, personal use. If you had your personal bag in your pocket and there's like a cellophane from a cigarette pack on the floor somewhere in the back seat, they're going to find it and put it next to your bag and say, ha, 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 I got you now, bitch. Oh, and yeah, you went yeah. through a school zone on the way here. Blah, blah, blah. And, they, and call, new they do all kinds of underhanded shit like that. In New Jersey, it was under 50 grams. If you had less than, you know, a little less than two ounces or. <laughs> yeah, it was a half ounce in West Virginia. Jesus. Yeah. I guess you're only allowed to carry around a quarter for personal. But back then in Columbus, Ohio, it was uh, it'd be like a twenty five dollar ticket if you had a half ounce instead of a felony. Yeah, I know. Because the the laws have never actually been uniform all across the country ever. Which is pretty good in a way, because if they were uniform, there wouldn't be no twenty five dollar ticket anywhere. That's true. You know. Well. Now, as long as you're responsible in New Jersey, you don't have anything to worry about. That was uh, the only law I uh, was breaking my whole adult life. I I would buy marijuana. Mm -hmm. And then I eventually um, got the medical card to keep myself from uh, getting into trouble. Mm -hmm. But one one of my friend's mom, who had the medical card, they took her to court because she had like a joint that wasn't in some pre-approved state uh, mandated packaging and tried to like charge her for possession of marijuana, even if she had the medical license. It was ridiculous. And the thing about people that sell weed, they're not like a Coke or heroin dealer or something. They're not like a biker gang that sells meth. They're like the guy that everybody loves, you know? He just comes around and has the good shit. And it's like, oh, thank God for you. Thank you. And they're like, yeah, I had to make a trip. Make like, a trip. You love that person. They're not like a pusher. You're like yeah. finding that person. You're bothering that fucking person. <laughs> you know? A pot, and you're not addicted and you're like, not hurting yourself. Like, yeah. it's so fucking bullshit. Yeah. Weed smokers are like the best people I've ever known in my life. Like they're, they're, they're most of them are not going to be the people that I suspect of like being up to underhanded shit. You know, that's, that's going to be like the Coke heads. That's going to be the crack heads. That's going to be the people doing meth. That's going to be the people on heroin. (laughs) It's not the weed smokers. The weed smokers just fucking, they just want to chill, man. For the most part, probably listen to some good music. Maybe watch a movie, make some cookies. I don't know. Some (laughs) of them, like me, shouldn't drink too much. Nobody should drink too much. Keep smoking the dang weed. (laughs) No. uh, Maybe have a coffee. That's good. I drank way too much when I was out in Las Vegas for the uh, IT trade show I was at because all these different vendors have like happy hours. And then I had other vendors taking me out to dinner and Holy Christ, I drank more than I should have. Hmm. I was stumbling a couple nights, but it was always, uh, you know, right back to the safety of my room. <laughs> didn't have to drive anywhere. Yeah. There's places, there's freaking casinos out there or like cities. I can only imagine at this point. Shit, I remember what it was back in the 90s. I haven't been there since then. I never went until like probably like 15 years ago onto the first oh, IT wow. trades IT trade show out there. And it's just gotten more grand, I guess you could say. 
I, I was, can imagine. Because they have was, that, that giant fucking projection arena now. Yeah. That was on the one side of the hotel. People that I uh, that work for me were on the other side of the building. I was in a different tower. Which, which hotel were you at? The Venetian. Okay. That place is amazing. It's like r ridiculous, like the opulence. They've yeah. got like a, a canal with people dressed up like, you know, they're in Italy taking you on a little gondola boat ride down their fake lazy river. Yeah. They have a room in there that you like walk through and it's like the, it's got like a super high roof that's painted like blue sky with cloudy and it's lit just like, it's like even walking there at nighttime and it like looks like you're walking in a daylight. It's crazy. But it's I'm a trying lot of to fun. remember the last one of those hotels I was in. I want to say it was either the Aladdin or the MGM, which I'm not sure either of those still exist. I those stay gondolas. I stayed in the MGM like five years ago for the same IT trade show, and it was in the it was in the Venetian, so I had to walk there, but uh, not as fun as staying actually in it because oh. you know it's easy to stumble back to your room. Oh yeah, well they make it easy too, you know, because they know that that's what the majority of people are probably going to be doing. Unless yeah, they're dumb much. and they get taken at the tables in five minutes and then they're just going to be pissed. <laughs> Spend their mortgage payments. Yeah. It happens. That's, that's one thing I'm going to have to ask Charlie about next time I uh, get him on for an interview. Talk about Vegas for a while. He was there for a, quite a few years. Quite a long while, real. yeah. Selling real estate, right? Yeah, I think he's still. Um, I think he's still involved in real estate, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Which is not necessarily a, a bad business to uh, to train in. No, the uh, the house values are ridiculously high, and people are still coming up with the money to buy them. So. Until that ends, I guess you're going to have the, the people who can have houses and the people who can't. And everything else is rent. And well, they'll squeeze squeeze us all through property tax. Yeah, they're going to do that. They're already starting to raise rents again. I saw that today. Well, I was uh, talking to a guy that works for me today. Um, he lives over in Philadelphia. And... He owns a house, but he was talking about maybe buying something closer to where we work at. And I was asking him, like, what's the rent over in that, that area? And he's telling me he thought it was like three grand for a one bedroom. And I was like, really? It's that expensive? That's that's ridiculous. And uh, he like looked it up while we were talking. And he's like, oh, here's one for like eighteen hundred. And it was like 450 square feet. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's a fucking box. That's yeah. like a bedroom, bedroom, bathroom. It's like a hotel room. Yeah, basically. it's a hotel room. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. With, with a, a hotel room with like a mini kitchen. <laughs> yeah. That's like a little bit less than, than half of the space that I have right now, which is that, that makes it about a hotel room. That's well, insane, he, man. Absolutely insane. And that, then he found the uh, the double size of that. Well, not exactly double. 10 square feet shorter, but 890 square foot was 3,000 a month. Well, I guess that's what they call pod life, right? If you don't want to live so. in the pod, you can check out one of these places. Pods are going to be cheaper, though. You do have to watch out for Raul. You know, he's uh, 
He's kind of touchy. <laughs> and sweaty. And uh, he doesn't take a hint very well. If you know what I'm saying. I think I get where you're fucking... I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, otherwise we all try to get along. I want to get further. In the pod. I'm I'm in the suburbs, but I'd like to get further, deeper into the more farmland. Yeah, that's what she said. I, I want to get I, deeper into the avatar capitalism for diversity and inclusion. Uh, mm. I'm happy you feel you that have, way. Do you have the the PDF? Yeah, dead fella gave it to me, and. Nice. I tried to get him on, but I think he's asleep. But he's probably asleep. Bug. Yeah, he was. One of the bug is music. He's he's working hard making tunes, along with Mister Yona. <laughs> why do you leave? The, why do you leave the chat yesterday? Oh, cause uh, he he got angry at something that I said. <laughs> oh, I could discuss it. I don't think I should. What? But he was. Uh, he had he was wondering i guess if you were being negative about kingsley dennis he no we talked about it. something that you had said yeah oh, we so talked you know. about it okay. yeah. and that's his boy so he was you know no, salty know. about it that's all it was simple misunderstanding yep it was a bad joke is what it was i can admit that much he speaks yeah. fluent English, but there still might mm -hmm. be a language barrier when humor comes to, you know. Well, that's, yeah, language barrier. Sometimes uh, humor doesn't translate. Right. Sarcasm. I was, telling him, I was telling him some awful shit about my personal life, and he was just laughing the whole time. So I don't, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that sense of humor. <laughs> uh, that's that's one of my favorite things about Dead Fella. Is it doesn't yeah. seem like it, it seems like it doesn't matter what you tell him, his response is going to be laughter. But yeah, it did it caught that, me a uh, little bit off guard too. I was like, oh shit, let me go back and listen to that. What the fuck did I say? Run it back. What? I didn't think it was that bad, but maybe it was. It's it's kinda good to yeah. laugh instead of cry sometimes. So. You have to laugh. Yeah. You have to them how those people Otherwise, you I told cancer. him how those people told him how those people had held me hostage and cut my toe off and sent it to my family before they finally gave up the five dollars to get me back. And uh, he was laughing the whole time. And he's like, nah. <laughs> "God bless him." Where is he at in Thailand? Bangladesh, Bangladesh. Yeah. Oh, which Bangladesh. has been the vassal state of India apparently, but is now the vassal state of the United States via the CIA wind-up jihadis uh, that murdered a bunch of Indian puppets. So they took control now of that area? Is there oil there or something? <laughs> no. It's just, um, I think, in retaliation for the BRICS move of India. The U.S. is like, oh yeah, well, I'll steal your little bitch. Like, the, no, like some I, it's, stuff. Uh, like I'll take your turf uh, here. Mm, he probably knows more. So there's a, um, from what I understand, there is a military base on the southern side of Bangladesh uh, that is considered a strategic resource at the moment. I'm not quite sure why, uh, but it would be a very convenient platform for launching operations into India. Or if, China. If that were, or China if that were to become necessary. And I think that is why, uh, if this was indeed a color revolution that took place in Bangladesh a couple months ago, um, I think that's probably why, is they want to make sure that they retain control of that strategic platform. Everything else is secondary. Well, I'm sure that all those weapons left behind in Afghanistan got uh, carefully distributed throughout that whole fucking region mm -hmm. to, you know, get whatever means that was necessary. Just a, I mean, it's probably not I'm sure some of them made their way Black. over to Iran as well. It's not that far oh, yeah. to travel. I'm sure. 
I'm sure it's not Operation Gladio anymore, but it's Operation nah, something. Nah. Those Afghani arms are going to go to the same people that got the Chevy trucks and the uh, Benghazi armory yep. cash. And they're going to go into Iran. Iran. Yeah. And they said the Iran Sheik on WWF, baby. Well, freedom prize. I, I don't You're know. On. I don't know if you guys uh, knew about this or not. We got five minutes, so I think we can squeeze it in. Uh, Do you hear about Israel invading Syria and destroying a military facility? No, I didn't. Yeah, that I know happened that in the been... last twenty-four hours. Israeli commandos around. destroyed a missile base inside Syria. Wow. Yeah. So I guess they figure they can just you know do whatever just, the fuck they want. Yeah, that's exactly it. They Moscow. can just go wherever the fuck they want, do whatever the fuck they want, and nobody's going to do a goddamn thing about it. You can find Moscow with U.S. munitions. Like, <laughs> how fact, are they not doing anything? Like, you know, so, so circle. Lucky. I don't know. Circle back to you know Flint, Michigan. So rather than you know fix their uh, poison war situation yeah. and. I'm sure they're just the one that everybody knows about. I'm sure every shitty, run-down, fucking liberal hellhole city that's out there has uh, in that same situation with their water supply. But we're just going to keep giving money to fucking them for bombs to keep moving on with their bullshit. Yeah. For their thousand-year-old plan yeah. that they the- MK Ultra sex abused their kids into carrying out i mean the only the only thing that i can tell is that this fell well within the bounds of the rules-based international order uh so it must be okay because nobody's nobody's you know freaking out about it so well i'm pretty sure if uh anybody raises a fucking stink about it at the fake un that the U.S. will use their veto power to make sure that there's no sanctions or, you know, strongly worded letters written oh. to Israel. Did <laughs> you see who uh, who joined South Africa uh, in their uh, their genocide case against Israel? No, I Chile. Didn't. Chile really? has joined South Africa in their genocide campaign against Israel. Uh, it. Legal campaign. Let me be clear about that. I'm wondering is so is Cambodia going to be the next one to join? Maybe Angola. I don't know. Liberia could be Sierra Leone, maybe. You know, I think for all the uh, social experiments they've been running, as long as uh, psychology has been a studied thing. They have no fucking clue what's going to happen when they try to, you know, do things. I, it's it's all got to be on a small scale, and then work their way out. They're never going to just do another COVID again. <laughs> Maybe they you will. Don't think? I I don't know. Even Bill Gates is predicting twenty five years out, and he's pretty he's pretty much the Nostradamus of when shit's going to happen, isn't he? I well, speaking know. of Nostradamus, I have to go back and check his record. <laughs> there's a guy who did a remote viewing session in 2017. He quickly drew some shapes and then inferred from the shapes. He channeled all this information. He wrote this in, and he has this weird so he had a demon uh, way of divining him. things. Yeah, he and he's and he divine he he ends up drawing what looks like a human arm with a bunch of what he described as yellowish rubbery, f- yellow rubbery flexible. Uh, tight, basically the clot shot clots that ah. the embalmers are pulling out. Ah. He, he basically drew them all intertwined with a intertwined in a human arm, and that there's some connection with uh, energy, energetic, uh, you know, transfer, uh, transmission with this medium. Something he's think, he predicts all this in 2017. It looks like crazy, right? But right. his latest prediction is a woman getting stabbed in the back around election time. Yeah, I'm, I, I've been. That's interesting because I've been uh, I've been resonating with that image uh, quite a bit lately. I don't I don't think she's going to get what she thinks she's going to get. I think she's being but, set up for something. 
a means for the martial law. I'm not sure. I'm I'm Lockdown. not quite sure. Uh, it, something. The, there's chaos coming. I I can the say civil that much. War that they've planned. I don't know if it's going to be civil war. Fomented with the media for so long. I, I, I think, don't think uh, that's a bit I overhyped. Don't, I don't think all the police and military are going to do all that they think they're going to do. You can only hope. I don't know. Angry North see. is in the studio on Monday, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week.